take down the op and get it hooked up y'all this is gonna be a rig right here i see this happening in the future right here kayak with that baby felt good to refresh the kayak skills but it's just gonna be raining the rest of the day so not good but osg and emmy have not seen as emmy calls it the house on wheels yet she's seen that in this little book that we have and it's so cute you guys so she knows it's coming gotta pull these posts up and then we're gonna attach it to the articulating uh hitch which i don't think i really showed you guys in the other video but uh this is a three axis articulating uh hitch it allows you to go extreme off-roading and not screw up your truck and trailer go ahead and shut the gas down and I'm gonna try not to leave too big of a divot in the yard getting out of here because it is very wet in there yeah. wabam well y'all the girls love as he calls it the house on wheels she's been on that thing every day and I have got great news after a little time guess who's back silver bullet back in action y'all so took took about a week uh, to get it back not too bad but She is in line spinning good and you know I built this little parking area over here for some sort of trailer and the OP is, is looking mighty nice right here so we got our two big toys in the driveway this this place honestly when you get inside of the OP it looks like you're in a park you know I built this uh, to look kind of like a park area um, with that wood and the gravel and stuff so I was just coming back here to um, you know, I was gonna grab my my tool right here, my little my little snippers, and then I just look happen to look over here. You guys just tell me if there's anything right there that looks a little out of place, maybe a little odd, maybe a little dangerous. Is that a stick? It's an odd colored stick. I, I don't I don't know. No, it's that absolutely disgusting creature, the copper-headed snake. I, I almost got tagged by one the other day. It's so scary, y'all, because Emmy was was playing. Uh, she had her, her little toys down here. She dropped something and she was playing and it was right here in the corner. I had it there was just a few leaves um, and I had this fencing right here um, laid over it. And so, of course, I come down here to, to dispatch it, and I lose it in the leaves, and I'm trying to get after it, and I've got my Crocs on, and the thing's, like, right here by my foot. So, um, you know, it's sandal season, but you always got to keep your eyes up when you're, when you're out here at the treehouse. So I need to find me a good dispatch tool right now, y'all. Now, luckily, when you roll up into the LFG Woodcraft and Fish Cave, you have quite a bit of options to choose from. My personal favorite, a fishing freak gave me this, y'all. I don't know who it's made by. I don't know, what, you know, what classification this is in. It's like a, a a small katana. Very nice, perfectly balanced. Weighted for those little sneaky critters. A Swedish forest axe. When you got those extra heavy necked sons of guns. Nice, beautiful sheen on that bad boy. Ooh, 
you do not want to be messing with that edge right there. Maybe we hit them with a Bravo one. Maybe we hit them with a little LT right with the Scandi edge. We got a lot of options, folks. But the thing that I found works the best is a good old sturdy stick. That's right. You get them with that good old sturdy stick. I just so happen to have a nice fruit hardwood. I'm not even sure what this is. Could even be hickory, but it is a dag up. My best friend gave this to me. And I've killed a number of snakes with this bad boy right here. It's hard. You discombobulate them and then you come in with the edge. Problem with this guy, if I miss, it's going back into the wood pile. I'm gonna switch up to cedar. It's a little lighter. I think I can get a little better results just in this situation with it. Now, for those of you that say, oh man, it's just a copperhead, you don't need to, you don't need to get those. You know, they're not doing you any harm. They're not coming out at you. I beg to differ. I got a two and a half year old daughter. She runs around like a daggum German shepherd. And if she steps on one of those things, it's definitely gonna tag her. I just can't have that. So every time I see one of them, I give them the business end of the stick. And I do want to thank the fishing freak that gave me that little edge weapon because I've I think I've got four or five under its belt now. It's it's getting a tally on it. And at first I just thought it was cool. I didn't really know what to do with it. Turns out it's the perfect little decapitator. Now I think the only proper thing to do is to take the silver bullet out, reunite, make sure she's running straight and true. And I know she is because Fun and Son took care of her, but I kind of want to give it a dangle. We're going to go local. This shear has been absolutely terrible. Um, Bunny sent me a report the other night from uh, one of our local lakes at one of the tournaments. I, they didn't even weigh any fish. There was, a, there was a tournament where they weighed no fish in. I just think that this, this year, with the amount of people that live in the Metroplex where I live, that got out and fished was so incredible. You know, because it, I mean, everybody's not going to work uh, or, you know, modified work hours. I think in the future, we're probably going to have to manage our fisheries a little better because the, the sport needs to grow. You know, the amount of anglers, I uh, always love to see that grow. Obviously, it's great for me being in the fishing industry, love to see that, but we also have to catch up with uh, that activity and make sure that we're um, maintaining our fisheries properly. So that comes with stocking, that comes with habitat, um, that comes with catch and release and being, you know, just very cautious at tournaments with your fish, everything like that. So anyway, it's been weighing on my mind lately with uh, some of these lakes just being unbelievably bad. But we're going to give it a shot today, see if, see if uh, there's a couple left in there. Oh man, the bug, the bug just gets tugged, y'all. We're here at the airport lake. Right in the midst of them. Just got my first bite. I didn't even strap a chesty on yet. But she's a beaut. Nice little posty. Nice little post spawner. See that bloody tail down there? We'll let that fish go. It's a great fish. Great fish for this lake, anyway. Woo! About too windy for the, the summertime hat. I just came in here with a little crankbait around the bank and I got a couple bites, uh, nothing big. I had like a white bass and a little spotted bass. And then I just scanned over with the live scope and I saw a fish just coming off a rock and I threw out there around where I thought the rocks were, came over it and started swimming with it. So that bug is just, it's good all times of year. It just gets tugs, but it's mid-depth fishing is what I'm at here. So see if I can get any more juicy bites in that you know, five to 10 foot of water.
There's a bite. Good fish out, but still, golly. I just got porky pounded right there. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, what is so nasty? took off with it. You were just swimming with it, buddy. Could hardly feel the bite in the wind. In fact, I didn't feel the bite at all. A little bigger. <laughs> to see the snake that was in the wood pile. I happened to see your story, yes. And then I happened to see that head that's just chilling there. Yep, it's still there. Uh, every time I walk by the wood pile, I, like, I think I see like, another, another copperhead. I know. I mean, it's good. Oh. Daddy has lots of fishies. You see, fish freaks, I gave Emmy a lure that looks just like this on the end of her fishing pole. And <laughs> she thinks that is hers. She's been practicing with it. Every day. And I think you're ready. I think you're ready to catch your first fish. But I just had to get the old, the old pull in, the tug on the end of the line, because you and I are heading to the dessert. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's no water. There's no <laughs> I'm water. I'm interested to see how you do, like, like a trip vacation with no water just desert nothing but hiking trails it's totally my up my alley yeah well this is your idea yeah exactly so uh osg she was like you know we should uh we should go to big ben i've always wanted to go there and that was one of the first things on the list after we got the camp we were like let's let's do the trip so i was like man uh, yeah I'll, I'll mix in some fishing where where is this place uh come to find out it's it's in the desert um, there's no fishing to be had. I've never, we've never gone on a trip that I can remember that, that doesn't, include doesn't involve me taking fishing poles. I probably still will, just rare just case. I come across a stream, you know, have to dangle. So we're truly, we are going into the desert. Um, we're taking the Opus and we're going on some like, what appears to be some pretty hardcore um, trails that uh, you, you can't take regular campers down. Can't even take a uh, regular vehicle down. You gotta have, you know, basically a lifted truck, four wheel drive, that that sort of thing. Uh, pretty much on the border of Mexico. Um, yeah, you know, deserts. Pregnant. Uh, pregnant. Come back alive. <laughs> should be fun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is her idea. We are gonna leave Emmy behind. It's just us. This is like our our baby moon before uh, you know summer. And, and it's, it's also crazy. a celebrating anniversary early. Six years. Oh yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah. That's true. Because I'm gonna be fishing <laughs> yeah, on our anniversary. Yeah, kind of all mixed in one. <laughs> so six years. Don't forget it. <laughs> yeah. How could I forget it? You want to show them how you've nested the this thing? Sure. Before we get on the road? Like I'm always kind of like Grinch style in here. <laughs> yeah, that is the belly. You do look like uh, like the Grinch belly. 
they don't look like the Grinch, though. So. And what do you think? You're all about them foods. What do you think? Oh, I am, wow. We're not going anywhere where I'm hungry. So I'm bringing Jeez, babe. Food. You brought the whole entire home kitchen pantry. Oh, yeah. And it keeps going. It's double stacked back there. That's cool. So when I, when I first uh, got in this thing, I wasn't even thinking about that as a pantry. I really wasn't either, but I was like, you know what? It works perfectly. It, it works perfectly, yeah. What are we going to be having on our trip? Um, well, I'm pre-prepping some pulled pork, some barbecue pulled pork, pre-prepping some stew. Then we're you're going to be cooking some steaks and some burgers. Keeping it pretty simple, so I'm not doing like cinnamon rolls and all that kind of jazz. And for anybody that's curious, Steph is... Uh... She's on a severe Pretty diet right now, diet. like very restrictive diet, trying to get her uh, thyroid in order. Which is, it's like, that's like a video in itself. We've talked about that a little bit on the Lake Life Family Channel, mm -hmm. but anyway. She's also doing a cookbook right now on cookies, over 60 recipes, and she makes one recipe every week. Uh, three. Three, I'm sorry, which I am required to eat. I'm usually home to eat one of them. The other she gives out to our neighbors. All right, y'all, thanks for tuning in for today's vlog. Always make sure to carry your snake dispatcher with you. You never know when you need it. And if you want to stay tuned for the next couple videos heading into the Great Wild West in OP with OSG, subscribe right here to the channel. And I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in to all the videos. Go ahead and smash that like button for great family outdoors, and I'll see you.